Staying with the IP campaign, political analyst Bongani Mashlangu now joins us via video link to unpack further, perhaps also offer a preview. Bongani, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on the SABC at this hour. Uh, good afternoon to you in studio and good afternoon to the viewers at home. So we're obviously looking at the dynamics unfolding ahead of um, the manifesto launch next week. And if we look at the IFP and KZN, its importance, perhaps compared to the ANC, the PAC, the MK party, even the EFF, what are you observing? Um, so we first have to acknowledge that KZN is the battleground for these elections. Um, and the possibility is um, the ANC is going to lose KZN. Um, and what informs that is the trends of KZN. So we have to go back into time. So in 1994, the KZN was under the IFP um, with the premier being Frank Mdalose. And then the next election in 1999, the IFP held on to KZN in a coalition um, under Premier Lionel Mjali. And then it was only in 2004, actually, when ANC took over KZN with Spoon Devil becoming Premier under a coalition. And the ANC grew from then, um, election after election, up until 2019 when they declined. So if you look at then into KZN, it has always changed hands between two political parties, whether they're in coalition or not. So it hasn't been relatively stable or a stronghold of one party. And then also if you look into the local government elections of 2021, you'd realize that the ANC did drop and it dropped significantly. And the IP did rise and it rised significantly, along with um, your EFF in the last last um, national um, election and also in the provincial, I mean the local government election. So then if you look at just those variables alone, one could make a determination and look at the current state of the ANC now, that KZN will be led by a coalition. The only question is who is going to lead the coalition because they are now um, the MK party and it's gaining ground in KZN and looking from the last um, by-election that they performed in and also looking at the numbers behind them, um, they're going to get significant numbers and also looking at the fact that the, N the NFP has declined in that province. Mm. They are going to also win those numbers and also weaken the ANC while also taking some numbers from the IFP as well. So with that um, variable coming in, and also the trends that I have just outlined, KZN mm -hmm. is gone. So the IFP right now is fighting hard so it can be in a coalition that it will lead. They okay. already have a pact with the DA in the province. Okay, so speaking about these possibilities and probabilities, we also have to look at its policies and the ideas. How appealing are they to you at this point, given the ideology? But we also have to look at the party, of course, in relation to that following the death of um, Chief Mangosuthu Butelezi as well. So if you look into the IFP's poli um, policy position, it has always been right-leaning. It has always been what you call liberal policies. But if you look into the average IFP member and voter, they are not aware of IFP policies. In fact, they identify the IFP um, relative to the leaders of the IFP. So when they look at the IFP, they still see some of them, more especially in your rural KZN and peri-urban KZN, as a Zulu nationalist organization, as it was founded to be a, a, an organization that will champion the national and cultural liberation interest of the Zulu people. So they are not concerned about those um, policies. But when you look into the presentation of um, the leaders or the current leader right now, they speak about contemporary issues, um, your ESCO, your corruption, uh, failed governance and so forth. But that is not the necessary interest of the voters of um, the IFP. If you look into the governance of the IFP at local government and when it was in charge of the provincial government, it was marked with poor performance. And people have forgotten about that. So this is common across the political spectrum, whereas people support a leader and not the party policy positions or proposals. Mm -hmm. So then that is where you see a cult of an individual or an individual rising beyond the organization. So if you look at the IFP today, um, one of their railing cries or one of their mobilization tools is evoking the name of uh, the, their deceased leader and Emirate president.
or their longest standing president and not necessarily selling any policy as to what actually we will do and what have we done. Remember, as we speak, they are holding the position of mayorship in various um, 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 local yes. municipalities in the province. They did hold MMC positions in the city of Eguruleni. They did hold MMC positions in the city of Johannesburg, but they cannot tell you what they've done and achieved with that power up to date. And so we're just looking, I mean, at the expectations for the upcoming elections, uh, possibilities of coalitions that you've also alluded to. I wonder if we look at how its appeal amongst the youth, what, what's coming to the fore on that front? How strong is their youth wing as well? The youth wing of the IFP, the IFP Youth Brigade, is one of the weakest youth wings for a political party that ranks probably in the top five in the country. Um, people don't even know who leads it. Um, it is led by their, its, its national chairperson, which is Sane Lezondo, who happens to be a member of parliament and was a councillor prior to that. But no one knows him. Um, he hardly even features in, even on platforms such as this one we are on right now. We don't even know what they stand for, what they seek to achieve. The last time we had a about them was when the IFP joined what was then coined um, the Moon Pact Agreement, talking about that they were not consulted with regards to that position of the IFP, and we've never heard of them ever again. And then also they do have a student organization called Sadismo. This is the organization that should be mobilizing for them in the sectors uh, of higher education, so that your PSET sector, mainly being your um, FETs and universities. People don't even know that it's led by Kayan Changase. They don't even know who Kayan Changase is. They don't even know what those people stand for. They don't even know which SRC election they feature in or have won or have contested and lost. So when it comes to the youth mobilization using those two tools, the RP Youth Brigade and Sadesmo, it is as good as useless. So now the only tool that they have at their hand is their current um, president that should lead them and also try his level best to mobilize the youth Along with um, 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 Shengi, if I'm not mistaken, if that's the name, um, the chairperson of um, a Scopa in Parliament. Those are the two popular um, figures and uh, personalities within the current structure right now. And it's them who can try to infiltrate the youth demographic of this country, but not their youth wings or student wings. Those ones are mm. domiciled, they're ineffective, they can't be used. And then Bongani, just on a national level, I mean, we've seen plenty of political parties choosing to launch their manifestos in KZN. We're looking at it becoming one of the battlegrounds. Talk us through about the significance um, on that front as well. Um, as I said earlier, the battleground or the primary battleground in this election is KZN. Yes. Uh, maybe then, maybe Gauteng, but KZN definitely, because there is a high probability that KZN will go into a coalition. Um, I'll give, I gave the trends in KZN earlier, and also I spoke about the rise of the MK party, mm. and also what the MK party uh, um, positions itself as, as articulated by their chief campaigner, um, former President Jacob Zuma, as a pan-Africanist um, black or African nationalist organization that is grounded in conservative um, social um, positions. You would have heard him speak about teenage pregnancy, LGBTI, um, Roman Dutch law. That does resonate with the demography in rural and semi-rural or semi-peri-urban areas of that province. And that will mobilize votes for them over and above his popularity and what he was projected as in the ANC as the man, the sole entity or factor or tool that the ANC he used and successfully used to win over KZN, which projected him again above the party, ANC in general, but um, KZN, ANC in particular. So now people resonate with that. So, and also if you look into these elections, there are elections that are marred largely and significantly by identity politics. So you would have organizations saying we are targeting the colored vote, the white vote, the Zulu vote, the black vote, and so forth. So now, MK in KZN will also be targeting the largely Zulu vote, and they mm. will resonate with the Zulu nationalist at heart. 
So the battleground will be KZN. EFF launched in KZN. Um, the ANC has launched in KZN. They're launching at the same stadium. Um, the IFP will be launching there as well. And we'll also see AMK doing something significant in that province as well. And then there will be small parties because we saw that the NFP um, has been allowed by IEC to contest. So they will try to also um, recoup their losses and so forth. But all in all, in conclusion, KZN will be lost. The question now is who will lead the coalition? And I was trying to say earlier, if mm. you look into the relationship between the DA and um, the IFP in, in yes. KZN, it goes way back. Um, it can be traced uh, largely in 2004 when the IFP tried to form a coalition with the DA and the Freedom Front Plus, which was unsuccessful. It was defeated by the coalition that was formed by the ANC. So their relationship goes way back, and it, is, and it has been formalized through the Moonshot, um, uh, what Moonshot, Moonshot Tech, Pack. I forget that mm. organization's name, and so forth. So it now has been formalized. They've also been working together since 2001, largely in Gauteng, city of Chuane, um, in um, city of Iguru Lane, city of Johannesburg. Equally, since then, in by-elections in KZN, you know that the agreement of theirs, where they say, where you are strong, you contest, we support you. So now that is leading and building up to the elections of 29 uh, May. So they yes. have a long-standing relationship, and they will be form. They will be hoping to form something solid. And also, then we also have to look at the performance of the DA in KZN. It has been growing, election by election. Um, it has been growing. I think 2004 they were at 10 percent, yes. and 2019 they were at 14 percent. So we cannot uh, also overrule or sideline the DA as if it will not be an important player in that province, more especially if they hope to work with the IFP moving well, forward. Well, Bongani, we, we're obviously going to monitor developments because this is um, set to be launched next week. We're aging closer to elections come the 29th of May. Thank you for your time on the SABC and for weighing in. We'll leave that conversation there for now.